Is that going to stop sucking yet? It's already going. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everybody. First of all, I want to apologize for my voice. Um, I One thing I want everybody to know, I hate the way I sound on the line stream. I just do. Most people are probably used to it. You probably... The church has heard it over and over and over again. They probably you probably say it's the same. But every time I hear my own voice, it just doesn't sound right. But I want to tell you, my voice is in really bad form tonight. So just bear with me. Um, I have Amelia here with me tonight. <laughs> it was her turn. Actually, she drew the short straw. <laughs> Dude. And so yes. tonight we are going to be doing because Sunday is Easter. And we are going to be doing our 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 Sunday lesson, or our Sunday, or our Easter, I should say, lesson. And you will find that on page, just a minute, that, that we're working off the page. Page five. Page five. So you turn to page five in your workbooks if you're following along. If you don't have workbooks, just listen. It'll be all right. You can get through it without the workbooks. This is for a study that we had started a while back and and the congregation has workbooks tonight we're going to be discussing first of all let's read john chapter 10. Amelia, maybe i should have you read john chapter 10 verses 17 and 18. okay <laughs> okay therefore doth my father love me because i lay down my life that i might take it again no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Amen. And I will read Romans 8. Starting in verse 37. Give you a few seconds to turn there. Romans 8, verse 37. Starting at verse 37, and we'll be reading to verse 39. Nay, in all these things uh, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I want to make a special note here. I have preached from this section of Scripture many times, or at least one or two times, and it talks about present nor things to come. Our past cannot prevent us from anything. It's not even mentioned. Amen. So don't... So we always are concerned about our past sometimes when we, when we, when we worry about our relationship with God and if our past is, is so bad that, that it will deter God from, no. Our past, once we repent, is done and over with. Amen. God only cares about now and the future. Amen. And that's what he tells us if we are to only worry about the now and the future. Amen. So when things go wrong, it is tempting to view ourselves as victims. Mm -hmm. Jobless, accidents, church splits, abusive relationships, financial catastrophe. All of us have had to deal with problems that were not necessarily of our own making. We are... Traversing a fallen, broken world in a body that is decaying. Amen. Mm -hmm. Much more rapidly than we would prefer. Mm. Amen. Maybe you do not want to... Do, may, I'm sorry, you never dreamed you would receive that diagnosis, but now hospital visits are part of your weekly routine. You did your best to raise your children in truth, but today they are wandering far from their spiritual home. You did not ask for it, but trouble landed in your lap anyway. So with that being said, I need to ask a question. Why do you think it is tempting to view ourselves as victims when life 
goes wrong. I think it's because we think it's our fault when it could have been possibly a fault of someone else or it's just how it happened. It's just coincidence sometimes. How about it's just life? But I guess the question is, when life happens, it, we, we always are tempted at times to view ourselves, as the question says, as victims. When the Word of God is solely contradictory to that. When we are in Christ Jesus, we are not victims. We are victors. Mm -hmm. We are victorious. Mm -hmm. Amen. And no matter what life throws at us, yeah, it may be complicated. Yeah, we may not have an answer for it. And yeah, we don't even know why it happens. But that still doesn't make us a victim. Amen. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if anyone did not deserve the suffering he endured, it was Jesus. Amen. He was tempted, but he never sinned. He walked in perfect wisdom. He was the embodiment of wisdom and knowledge. When he never made rash decisions based on pride, lust, or fickle human emotions. But when Satan presented Jesus with the opportunity to seize worldly glory and power for himself, Jesus refused the offer. Is tomorrow filled with nothing but misery and regret? Why would we view tomorrow with misery and regret? Is it maybe because we maybe made some mistakes today? Is it maybe because we are in fear of tomorrow? These are all the questions that we are going to discuss tonight. As far as we're going to try to we're going to try to to pick apart: Am I a victim or am I a victor? Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. Which one am I? Am I a victim or am I a victor? Amen. Is there hope for the future? I mean, we look outside today and turn on the radio, especially with what we're dealing with right now. And I know there's a lot of people referring to it, but it is always on the You can't turn on the radio and not find any news on it. I mean, it, 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 is, it is dominating every broadcast of every kind. Mm -hmm. You can't even listen to a music station without it. You can't. It, it's everywhere. And so you can't even get away from it. So that is our now. And then we might ask ourselves, oh no, if I, re if I get it, does that make me a victim? A victim of what? Mm -hmm. Or are we trapped? Let me, let me ask a question. And I just, I'm just going to throw this out there. And maybe Amelia, you might have the answer. You probably will. It's a very simple question. Okay? It's a very simple question. Let me ask a question. If life on earth was a utopia and nothing ever went wrong, would we want to leave? Amen. Mm -hmm. Would think about that. Would we want to leave? And as long as there's sin present, right. no matter what relationship we have with God, we are subject to a sinful world. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just because we are subject to a sinful world does not mean that we are free from anything going wrong in our lives. But just because things go wrong in our lives 
Tonight we're going to find out that that doesn't make us victims. So, is there hope for the future? Or, the other question is, are we trapped in the clutches of our enemy, watching helplessly as he tears our lives apart? Maybe that's a good question. Maybe when everything is going wrong, and maybe we feel like victims because we feel helpless. Mm -hmm. How many out there feel helpless? Definitely, probably more. How many apostolics feel helpless sometimes when things go wrong? Mm -hmm. There's good news. Believe it or not, for those who put their faith in Jesus and his sacrifice at Calvary. Here's the first answer. Satan's apparent triumph at the cross contained the seeds of his ultimate Defeat. Satan's ultimate defeat. Amen. When a Roman soldier drove the final nails into Jesus' hands and feet, the devil imagined he had won. But the devil isn't the only one. Everybody who was crowded around the feet of Jesus thought it was done. Even his own mother thought her son was gone. All his disciples thought it was over. So in their eyes, it did look like the devil won. So when things are going wrong in our lives, is the question we feel like victims or is it we think the devil won? But the truth was, Jesus was on the cusp of the greatest victory the world had ever witnessed. He was not a victim. He was the ultimate victor. The words of the accusation, the words of the accusation Pilate hung on the cross testified to the truth. This is Jesus, the King. His suffering was not a prelude to defeat. It was the means by which he conquered sin and death for all humanity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why do you think suffering was the part was part of the plan for the Messiah? Right. Because we suffer. Mm -hmm. So are you presently enduring some manner of suffering? Well. Well. Yeah. Well. yeah turn on the radio. <laughs> look outside. All of us are sitting around the house, but we'd probably rather be doing something else because we've been around the house. We how about want to be at church? Right? How about yeah. not being at school online? How, how about not being at church right now? Right. I feel like I'd rather be at school than at home doing school. No. I bet you all the kids probably are saying, even those who hated school are probably saying, <laughs> I want to be at school. No, 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 I'd rather have online than go to high school, but, but. My professors don't barely know how to use email. I'm going to lose my mind. Okay? It's a event. So we look at this and we say, okay, yeah, we're, we're enduring some manner of suffering. So the words of the Apostle Paul are still true. If we suffer, we shall reign with him. Mm -hmm. that was, that's found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Paul also wrote, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory, which is 2 Corinthians 4, 17. So what did it say again? For our light affliction, 
which is but for a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This Amen. will pass. Yes. Yep. And I will tell you, I I can. I don't know how exactly, mm -hmm. but I can tell you this: the church will come out of this victorious. Oh, amen. Yes. I may not necessarily know how it's going to happen or what, what's going to transpire through it all. Mm -hmm. But we know from past experience, mm -hmm. we're going to come through this victoriously. Right. And we're going to come through this in a way that's going to absolutely blow our minds. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I am excited in a time when everybody should be feeling sad about what's going on. And I do. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited about because this isn't the end. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. So, so these afflictions, which are but for a moment, worketh for us. Right. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Mm -hmm. Parents, I hope you're using this time to get closer to your kids. Right. Mm -hmm. We read this earlier, how sometimes our estranged children from God might be because we as parents we as parents have got to take the responsibility and maybe we didn't nurture that in them. And I am trying to get us to understand that now God has given us the opportunity to get back to the nurturing aspect of parenthood. Mm -hmm. Too many times, and you see it in the world today, where children are left to raise themselves, and the worst thing an apostolic parent can do is allow their children to raise themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to get back to that. Should I, should, the, am I saying then it's our fault? No. But I am saying is we need to take this opportunity to get back to some of the basics of the Word of God. And the Bible always talks about parents putting our children first. We put our families first. And we need to put a relationship with God at the top, but then our families need to be in there at the top. Mm -hmm. And maybe we just have to take this opportunity and maybe this is what God is trying to do is give us the opportunity and the time finally mm -hmm. to put some, op some of our time back into our children. Amen. Back into those things that matter. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because what we are striving for isn't for glory here. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's for a future glory in heaven. Yes. Yep. It's yep. for that time. Mm -hmm. And what we do here, we just have to endure for a while. Because compared to eternity, a lifetime on this earth is a while. Right. Just a short while. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. So just as he did it at the cross, Jesus Christ is turning our defeats, our defeats into triumphs. Mm -hmm. God's working behind the scenes. Yep, right. Amen. I had the privilege of, of many opportunities through Bible college and, and through my adult years to work in dramas and work in plays and to work in productions a sort that of that kind and a lot of my jobs when I come out of Bible college while I was a Bible college we we mainly were on the stage but we also had the jobs and which was a great part about it was we wrote our own plays mm -hmm. and then we even sort of quote unquote directed our own plays mm -hmm. we had an advisor who was there to make sure everything went off and to keep us motivated which was a full-time job, may I say. <laughs> but we did everything from beginning 
to end. But one thing was apparent to me when I was even at that point and even as an adult, there is a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes that the audience does not see. The audience sees the final production. But the audience never seen what took place before and what takes place during. Mm -hmm. They see the production, but they don't see what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I know from experience, what goes on behind the scenes is just as important, if not more important than what goes on on stage. Right. And so we may have a tendency to think that what we're living, our lives is that important. But I want to tell us tonight that God is working behind the scenes. And that is a far more important work than what we do. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's how he's able to take what we go through and turn them into triumphs. So Satan is not winning. I wish I could look at the camera and say, everybody say with me, Satan is not winning. <laughs> In fact, he is sowing the seeds of his own defeat. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, he will experience deliverance. Right. We will experience deliverance if we, what would be the word? Stay faithful. Yes, amen. If we were to stay faithful, mm -hmm. we will experience deliverance. Right. But I, I don't feel I can't feel I can't be faithful. Why can't you be faithful? Mm -hmm. I believe in this day and age, there's more people now turning to God right. than ever before. Mm -hmm. And if it takes a disease to do it. I, I heard a talk radio and, and a gentleman called up and he, he said, he asked a simple question and, and, and it has to do with the end times. And the, 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 the host was saying how pastors in general do not understand the end times. And so it, end times is not preached or taught the way it should be. And so therefore, some people don't see this as a sign of the end times. Mm -hmm. But if you are a student of the end times, mm -hmm. if you are a student of what the word says about there's going to be wars, rumors of pestilence and all these things, and we look out and we see all the locusts. We read the scripture. I think the night Zoe was with me. We read the scripture. Where was that found? Oh. Well, anyways. It talks about locusts, which we are experiencing. The, the fires burning. We, we, that, that was Australia, the locusts in Africa. And now we're dealing with pestilence here Second and around the world. 713. 2 Chronicles 713. I knew it was 2 Chronicles. Like, I know, I couldn't remember. I was like, is it 17? Is it 7? 7, 13, and 14? Yep. 7, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. So, it is a sign. Mm -hmm. Does that mean the trumpet's going to blow tomorrow? No. But does that mean we need to be more ready? ready? Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we need to be take it more serious? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that mean we need to we need to start thinking about how close how how easy it was? Mm -hmm. To keep us home. Mm -hmm. We were willing to give up some of our basic freedoms to stay home for safety. We are in the last days, folks. Mm -hmm. So the next question or answer to the next questions is, how do we endure until victory arrives? Mm 
How do we endure until victory arrives? You have any ideas? We can use this time to the fullest to get, like, read our Bibles and pray more because we're at home. Right? Mm -hmm. So many of my pastor friends in the district and, and around, around the globe are live streaming services and 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 we're all watching each other's and we're we're getting encouragement from one another and i would challenge the church in rhinelander you, you, they're out there i mean there there are some some of them are are friended on our church page mm -hmm. and all of them are doing live streams mm -hmm. need to check them out some of them are doing daily 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 emo, uh, emotionals <laughs> devotionals <laughs> <laughs> daily devotionals in the morning <laughs> you know you need to check those out mm -hmm. you know our, our our workbooks have daily devotionals in them mm -hmm. we need to go through these things how do you endure by drawing closer to God mm -hmm. Amen. So while we are experiencing the sadness and suffering of the cross, Sunday morning seems to be an eternity away. What do we cling to between the darkness of Friday and the dawn of Sunday? What do we do? Where do we place our confidence while waiting for a resurrection? First of all, and this is the another answer. First, we can we can have confidence in what you said it, God's word, yep. the word of God. We need to be reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. We need to be studying it. Mm -hmm. we need to be taking this time to 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 set up a daily devotional if we don't have one. Mm -hmm. We need to set up a time to. We talked. I talked about about altars and. If we're not going to the church and praying at that altar, we need to have a place to pray. Mm -hmm. We need to have a place to get get along with God. We need to, now that we're not constantly, can't constantly run to and fro all day like a chicken with our heads cut off, is pretty much go to work and come home. If you're lucky, you still have a job and you're still working. For those of you who aren't working, you're home all the time. Yeah, you're probably bored out of your mind, but <laughs> there's opportunities. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our victory has already been prophesied in Scripture. God can take life's worst and make it work out for our good. Let me ask you this. If God can raise himself from the dead, then why in the world do we see our lives as hopeless mm -hmm. how much more can he do for us his the the creation he loves mm -hmm. amen so if god be for us who can be against us mm -hmm. amen So Jesus knew the cross was coming, but he also knew it was not the final stop on his journey. I remind of this of a song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. The treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore amen we're, we're, we're this isn't our final stop right and this is just a journey as a man he clung to the hope that death and destruction would give way to life. Mm -hmm. 
He knew suffering would not have the last word. I think we need to rethink. I think we need to rethink the fact that when we experience the victim mentality that we all of a sudden give Satan authority in our lives. We give the enemy and fear authority in our lives. And when we feel like crying, we should worship. When we feel like weeping, we should rejoice. When we feel like, like, like crawling into a ball in the fetal position, we should praise and worship. Mm -hmm. We should feel joy and excitement. Because guess what? When Jesus knew that his, well, everybody else around him was crying. Mm -hmm. He was on the cross telling his, the guy next to him, I won't forget you. Right. Mm -hmm. He told his disciples, don't cry. In three days, I'll rise again. This temple will rise again. We also can have confidence in God's love. That's the next answer. Difficulties and setbacks are much easier to endure when we feel the love of those closest to us. Even when we face problems of our own making, there is a confidence that comes with knowing we are loved regardless of our faults. Our faults. God loves us regardless. And I can guarantee you there are loved ones that love us regardless. Mm -hmm. Amen. God's love does not mean we will not have to endure the earthly consequences of our sins. Woe to the parents who often allow their children to experience the repercussions of bad behavior to keep them from repeating those mistakes. God loves us more than any human parent ever could. We may not always understand his ways, just as children do not always comprehend the actions of their parents, but we can rest assured that he loves us. Amen. I should say, wise parents often allow their children to experience the repercussions of bad behavior to keep them from repeating those mistakes. I agree and disagree sometimes. But the simple fact is sometimes as parents, we don't know how to get our children back once they made those mistakes. Mm -hmm. I will always agree that a parent should allow their child to experience the world if you want them to grow up to be apostolic adults. Because let me ask the question, how then do you get them back? Do you think that they're going to they're going to discover that the world isn't any fun? And do you also think that they're going to admit that they made a mistake? Mm -hmm. Especially when adults can't even admit they made a mistake. How do you get them back? As wise parents would like to say, "Oh, you know what? Let them taste the world and maybe they will they will they will lose a, a taste for it." No. Not necessarily. 
So I don't fully agree with that. Do I understand that, that they may have to understand what a hot burner means? Yes. <laughs> Will they have to burn their hand once before they realize that hot means hot? And it means ouch? Yeah, probably. But do they have to experience the world to become better apostolics? No. Finally, the next answer, we can have confidence in God's will. Let me ask a question. It's kind of hard to have confidence in something we don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. If I were to ask every individual, and, and most, most, most people ask the question, what's God's will? Most people don't really have an answer. And if they do, it's all varying and it's all different. But God's will is just mainly this, that no man shall be lost. Mm -hmm. That all shall come to repentance. That's God's will. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what God's will is for my life once I've already done all of that. Preach it, mm -hmm. teach it, live it. Mm -hmm. Jesus previously decla had declared, I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. No man can take it unless I freely give it up. There's a truth to that. There's a spiritual truth to that. The enemy cannot take our lives unless we freely give it up. The enemy cannot have dominion over our lives unless we freely give it up. The enemy cannot have any power over us unless we freely give it up. There is no enemy. No weapon formed against us shall prosper unless... We let it. Mm -hmm. Unless we let it. Jesus' enemies did not have the final say. You might look at me and say, but pastor, he rose again. But he had to freely give it up. First of all, we're not dying for, for one another's sins. We're trying to live a godly life. Right. We're trying to live a victim-free life. Mm -hmm. And the only way Satan can make us a victim is if we allow him to do it. Right. If we let him do it mm -hmm. is the only way. If we don't let him do it, we can't be victims. Mm -hmm. If you are a child of God, negative circumstances cannot destroy you. People do not have the final say in your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. No matter how powerful they seem to be, Satan himself does not have authority over you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God is in control. His plan will be carried out. And his purpose for your life will be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. 
Let me ask a question. Is it possible to fulfill God's plan for our lives for always hiding and running from Satan? That's why the scripture says, do all that you can to stand. Stand, therefore. Because you can't do anything while you're running backwards. Right. You can't do anything while you're running away. Mm -hmm. The only way you can become victorious is if you stand. You take a stand. You stand up for something. Amen. You take authority over the situation. Do we have the ability to take authority over our own situations? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We don't have to let the situation take authority over us. We need to take authority over the situations. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is in control. His plan will be carried out. His purpose for our lives will be fulfilled. Think about this. Satan used every weapon at his disposal to destroy Jesus. Mm -hmm. Death. The final weapon. Mm -hmm. That's all he had. The word of God says we will even rise again mm -hmm. in newness of life. So death doesn't even have control on us. Mm -hmm. Death isn't even our final say. Mm -hmm. Death isn't even the final weapon Satan has against us. Mm -hmm. Three days later, Jesus came forth from the grave. Is your next answer. Triumphant. Let me ask a question. How do we rise triumphant mm -hmm. from the grave? When your faith is in his hands. Baptized. Mm -hmm. Baptized in Jesus. When we are baptized in Jesus' name and we buried in his name, the Bible says. What does the Bible say about that? We're buried with him in baptism. We rise again. Come out of that water. Sins remitted. And he fills us with the Holy Ghost and we speak in other tongues. We at that moment just rose triumphant over Amen. death. Amen. Amen. We are walking in newness of life. Mm -hmm. We are walking a triumphant life. Mm -hmm. We are walking a victorious life. Mm -hmm. And anybody who is walking on this side mm -hmm. is not a victim. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. His victory was a precursor to ours. So why do we celebrate Easter? Mm -hmm. We celebrate Easter not because Jesus himself rose again from the dead, mm -hmm. but because he rose again from the dead, we now have the power and authority to rise and be more powerful than death. Mm -hmm. Death isn't the final say in our lives anymore either. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. His victory is the last answer was final and complete. Yes, amen. amen. Let's read Romans 8 again in closing. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, this is Paul, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Mm -hmm. There is nothing out there that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. our Lord. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm 
can separate us. We are not victors or victims. I'm sorry. We are victors. We are not victims. Amen. We are not. Amen.